In today's video, I'm finally going to talk about the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X3D, uh, which is a processor that offers the unmatched gaming performance of the 9800X3D, uh, but then with a bunch of extra cores for people who want to use their PC for some uh, proper CPU heavy work as well. And in theory, uh, this should be the best all around CPU that you can currently get. So let's see how it performed in 45 different games we tested for this video and how it compares to the 9800X3D as well as Intel's strongest competitor, the Core Ultra 9 285K. Let's begin. Spec-wise, the 9950X3D is another Zen 5 AM5 socket CPU, uh, which means that it is compatible with 800 and 600 series AMD motherboards. Uh, you just need to make sure that you update your BIOS so it will work properly. And if you compare it to the 9800X3D, uh, the main difference is the addition of another 8 cores. Half of the cores are supported by the 3D V-Cache and the other half are not. Now more cores does mean that the TDP is also higher, uh, but I'm going to talk about the actual power consumption a bit later in this video. Clock speeds are also a little bit higher and the memory spec remains the same, but a more typical DDR5-6000 memory will work just fine as well. And last, but definitely still very important, the 9950X3D is also more expensive than the 9800X3D as well as the Intel Core Ultra. Now do keep in mind that the 9950X3D X3D does not come with a cooler and considering that this is a 170 watt TDP chip, you will have to buy a proper cooler for this CPU. Now, as I said at the start, I will be comparing this new 9950X3D CPU to the 9800X3D, as well as the Core Ultra 9 285K, which has been retested using all the latest updates. Uh, for the GPU, we use the RTX 5090, and as always, we try to make the test benches as comparable as possible, but if you want to know the exact specs of the systems that we were using and uh, all of our testing conditions, uh, I'm going to leave all the details in the description box down below and you can go ahead and check it out. So if we look at a couple of standard CPU benchmarks, so we can see that the 9800X3D was not really competitive there. And in Cinebench, for example, it was nowhere near the 285K. But the 9950X3D does really well here, uh, closing the gap almost completely with the Intel being only 2% faster than the new Ryzen 9. In single core performance, the difference is a little bit bigger in favor of Intel. And if we look at the quick blender render, the 285K is still faster by just a fraction, uh, but all of these differences are pretty insignificant. Now, if you look at a longer render, Intel has high boost speeds initially, but after a while they do start to drop down with AMD then pulling ahead. So in this gooseberry benchmark, the 9950X3D is now a lot faster than the 285K. When we look at V-Ray, the AMD is significantly ahead as well, so it definitely depends on which benchmark you're looking at, but generally speaking, the 9950X3D is anywhere between uh, being roughly equal to quite a bit faster than the Core Ultra 9 285K. And keep in mind, it does that while using less power on average, so uh, from an efficiency point of view, it looks pretty great as well. That being said, uh, this is also an AM5 CPU, so if we look at the total power consumption in idle, it uses a lot more power than the Intel system. And depending on your use case and how much you pay for electricity in your region, uh, that constant extra power draw can really add up over time. So if I use the average cost of electricity here in the Netherlands, uh, which is 32 cents per kilowatt hour, and I just let uh, both systems sit in idle for a year, the AMD would cost 100 euros more to run than the Intel rig. And yeah, this is maybe an extreme scenario, but I still don't think it is acceptable for a system to use this much more power while doing absolutely nothing. And I really want to see some improvements from AMD when it comes to uh, power use in idle. Anyway, uh, let's look at the gaming performance, starting with Alan Wake 2. At 1080p resolution, the 9950X3D started off pretty well, uh, beating the 285K by about 14%, with significantly better 1% lows. That puts it just ahead of the 9800X3D as well. At higher resolutions, the gap is a little bit smaller, but the AMD is still ahead. 
In Formula 1 2023, the 1950X3D and the 9800X3D perform roughly the same, uh, doing around 290 FPS on average, while the 285K is not anywhere near that. Actually, Intel's average FPS is lower than 1% lows of the AMD chips. On 1440p, both AMD CPUs performed roughly the same, with Intel uh, still being behind them. And on 4K resolution, uh, where we are more GPU bound, all three chips were performing roughly the same. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 9950X3D just managed to outperform the 9800X3D, with the Intel yet again being behind them by a decent margin. On 1440p, both Ryzen's performed roughly the same, with Intel still being behind, and at 4K resolution, the performance is about the same, regardless of your CPU choice. In Baldur's Gate 3, the 9950X3D managed to beat the 9800X3D by a few percent, with the Intel still way behind. A 1440p resolution looks the same, and so does the 4K resolution, with AMD having a nice lead over the Intel that just cannot get past 140 FPS in this game. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 9950X3D ended up just behind the 9800X3D, with the 285K just behind AMD, but the differences are actually small in this game. At 1440p, they're all very close, and at 4K resolution, the Intel actually took the lead for a change, but unfortunately by an irrelevant amount. In Starfield, the 9950X3D also ended up uh, just behind the 9800X3D, with Intel being a little bit behind, and at high resolutions, the gaps do close with insignificant differences between the three chips at 4K native. Indiana Jones is interesting because uh, it is the only title where Intel was in the lead at 1080p resolution, uh, even though the difference is not too big. The 1950X3D did beat the 9800X3D by a small margin, but at 4K resolution, things even out once more. In Remnant 2, at 1080p resolution, the 9800X3D is the fastest chip of the three, with the 9950X3D being just a little bit behind and the Intel far behind. The situation is the same at the 1440p, and at 4K resolution, the differences are small, but the 9950X3D did end up ahead. Now, I'm not going to talk about 45 different games individually, so let's check out some summaries, uh, starting with 1080p. And as you can see in this graph, uh, everything was running really well. So whichever game you throw at it, this CPU will easily run it on high refresh rate monitors, assuming that your GPU is fast enough as well. On 1440p, some games will be GPU limited, even with a, a 5090, and uh, some others will be CPU limited, but as long as you have a GPU that is powerful enough to back it up, the 9950X3D will not really limit your experience in any of these titles at this resolution. And at 4K resolution, you are generally GPU bound in most titles, so a summary like this is not really valuable for just looking at the CPU, but in my opinion, uh, it is still very useful to see a large summary of games and what you can expect from this CPU uh, when you combine it with a high-end GPU. Now, if we compare it to the 9800X3D data, the majority of games show little to no difference at all. Now, there are a few exceptions where the gap is more than a couple of percent, but those are rare and on average, they end up with a roughly similar performance, which is really impressive from AMD, considering the fact that half the cores do not have that extra uh, 3DV cache that really benefits games. So the old 7950X3D was regularly beaten by the 7800X3D in games by a significant margin, uh, which no longer seems to be the case with this new generation of processors. Now, there's still a few titles here and there that could use a bit more or optimizing, I would say, but it doesn't feel that you have to give up some gaming performance just to get that extra multi-core performance uh, like you did before. And as long as you look at high resolutions, uh, things balance out even more with no significant differences between the two AMD processors at all. Now, when we compare it to the Intel Core Ultra 9 that we retested for this video after months of BIOS, chipset, and Windows updates, the Intel does manage to score or a few very small wins here and there, but the 9950X3D wins more games and sometimes by 50% or even more. On average, 
the new AMD is about 20% ahead of Intel, which is nothing short of embarrassing. Even at 1440p, there are significant differences, with AMD being about 15% faster on average, and only on 4K native, things look a bit more balanced. The 9950X RD is still ahead on average, but if you only care about the general 4K performance, the CPU doesn't really matter that much, even though it still makes a difference in some titles. When it comes to power consumption while gaming, the 9950X RD does use a bit more power, and if you take into account that both AMD CPUs have a roughly similar gaming performance, the 9800X RD is clearly the more efficient one. And a little side note here, so if you're considering to get this new AMD CPU, it is very important to know that you will have to go through a couple of steps to be able to get the best performance out of this 9950X RD. So just like with any other CPU, uh, just moving your current install over will very likely have a negative effect on the performance. Uh, it does require the Game Bar app to be installed, and AMD clearly states that if you use the old control panel power options instead of the newer Windows settings power profiles, you would have some issues as well. So in our case, we actually had to reinstall everything two times before we got the expected performance. So we were following AMD's instructions step by step, and the first time it just didn't work for some unexplained reason, and then the second time it somehow did. Keep in mind, this was in the reviewer's guide and not something that you will know if you just uh, went to the shop and bought this CPU. So that there is a pretty big chance, I would say, that some people will buy this and actually never get the peak performance that this CPU has to offer, and some might not even know that that is the case. So in my opinion, Every 9950X 3D box should come with a simple step-by-step -step guide to make sure that everyone gets what they paid for. Anyway, if you just care about the gaming performance, I don't think that the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is a perfect CPU. The 9800X 3D is cheaper and it uses less power, plus if you care about idle or a light use power consumption, AM5 CPUs in general are not that efficient, so there is still some room for improvement, I would say. But um, in just every other possible way, the Ryzen 9 9950X3D is the best high-end CPU that you can get at the moment. If we look at multi-core performance, it is now basically the fastest consumer CPU on the market, and then especially so in workloads that take uh, longer than a minute or two to complete, uh, which is what most people buy high-end CPUs for in the first place. Now, AMD also has the benefit of being compatible with a bunch of older motherboards, including a B650 and X670 models that are actually very affordable at the moment. Uh, this CPU doesn't need an extreme cooling solution to be able to work well. It doesn't need very expensive memory either. And uh, even though it's been out for weeks now, it is in stock in many regions, which is so refreshing to see uh, after all the GPU launches that we had in the last few months. And I still think that AMD has done a fantastic job when it comes to gaming, uh, making sure that this 16 core X3D chip is as good as their eight core 9800 X3D. So if you go for the CPU that will be much better for your work applications, you won't be sacrificing your gaming performance like you had to do with the previous generation. So if you want the ultimate processor that is uh, unmatched for heavy workloads and for gaming, this is pretty much the CPU to get at the moment. That's it. Now that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new gaming monitor, the Xenion 34WQHD 240C. This beautifully designed monitor comes with a top-of-the-line 34-inch QD OLED panel with a subtle 1800R curve and ultra-wide Quad HD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, instant response times and a near-perfect color reproduction, making it a great option for anything from fast-paced games to immersion games, from content consumption to content creation. And if you are worried about possible burn-in that is inherent to all OLED panels, Corsair has you covered with a three-year long warranty that includes burn-in. So if you're looking for a new high-end ultra-wide, please do check out the link in the description below. 
Thank you all for watching and staying to the end. I really hope this video was uh, helpful and interesting enough. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, uh, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.